great pizza. I remember that that was being. Please join me for the yeah. Pledge of Allegiance. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Welcome to the September 21st, 2015 Selections Meeting. We'll start with public comment. Please join us, John. Good evening. Uh, John Nyan, uh, and I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of the Hampton Beach Area Commission and the experience, uh, experience Hampton. I just want to add a, a comment because I was one of the early critics uh, a little over a year ago with regard to the fire inspection and, and uh, the, the slowness of uh, the activities here in, in town. Uh, but uh, over this past, past year, I have to tell you that um, from the business community down at the beach to the businesses on Lafayette Road and throughout of Hampton, I, I truly feel that things have turned around. I think the inspector, fire inspector, along with Jamie, um, and the secretary in the fire inspection office, yes. Stephanie, yeah. uh, have done a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, so I just, I'd like to bring some positive stuff uh, to the board and to, to recognize that there are individuals that work within the depa departments in the town that are doing a great job. And as I said, uh, I've noticed a big difference and businesses uh, throughout the community have told me what a difference they've seen over the past year. So I just want to bring that up as topic number one. Topic number two, um, I had a meeting with Kevin Schultz, and I'll, I'll explain that to you later on when I, during our appointment. But there was one thing we brought up with Kevin that I also would encourage the Board of Selectmen to see if there's anything that you all can do. Um, Experience Hampton continues to try to uh, improve the look of downtown Hampton, either directly or indirectly. An eyesore, once again, is the old Shell Station oh, at the yes. corner across from the galley hatch. Um, about a year ago, somebody from uh, the town, I don't know if it was Fred uh, or somebody, made that important phone call to the owners and said, you really got to clean up your property. I talked to Kevin Schultz today, and he was very willing to make that phone call. He can't enforce it. There's nothing to enforce in terms of the, the grass and the weeds and everything, but he said he would make a phone call. So I would just encourage the Board of Selectmen here also to kind of see what we can do to pursue that cleanup because it is an, a, an eyesore for downtown. Um, there is no consideration whatsoever. Um, I feel terrible about Kenny Bank, Port, uh, Kenny Bank Savings because they do such a great job yeah. in landscaping around their property and the weeds are so high at the Shell Station that you can't even see the flowers at Kenny Bunk. So I would just ask the Board of Selectmen to, to see what could be done possibly through the town manager's office uh, or through Kevin's office. Thank you. Good idea. I think, John, the, at least one of the owners lives in Massachusetts. I think that was a bit of a hang up last year. Actually, that, uh, you can please join us up, Brian. The town manager did notify them, and they're, they have no intentions of doing anything. Mm. So that's how that goes. The bank, uh, for, I know people that are involved at the bank, and they're willing to, you know, they've been willing to, to work with those people, and the people are not willing yeah. to work with anybody. Good evening. Uh, Brian Lapham, 27 High Street. I just wanted to clarify something which I apparently said, and I'm not going to deny I didn't. Um, when I s mentioned in the paper a few weeks ago about the protocol, I, my intention was that I felt that it was unnecessary, only for the reasons spelled out on the RSAs. I spoke with Mr. Waltz before he left for vacation um, and <coughs> cleared it up with him. And I just want us all to try and work together. It's going to be a long fall. And I, I will do everything in my power to see that we try to get along between the selectmen and the budget committee. So thank you for your time. 
Any other comment? Seeing none, we'll go on to announcements and community calendar. Mr. Waddell? Yeah, I'll just uh, I'll piggyback on what Mr. Nyan said, uh, that there's a lot of positive going on, that we've seen a lot of positive in town, and I'll piggyback on what Brian said, that it's really crucial that we all tone down our rhetoric, rhetoric a little bit lately, a bit amongst individuals, amongst boards, and that we work more cooperatively. There will always be differences, but I'm sure we can get along a lot better, and I'm sure we can move our agendas forward much better. So thank you, Brian. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. Mr. Bryant. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to remind everybody that over the next uh, at least two or three weeks, uh, there is going to be construction going on downtown mm. on the evenings. Um, they're trying to do it at night to make it as least evasive as possible. Uh, I have talked to a number of the, the businesses downtown. Uh, they were very supportive of the way things were being done. They were very happy how our assistant director went in and talked to all them and, and kept them informed. So I think that part of it is working well. And just be patient with, with Public Works and, and the construction company that's there. Uh, they want to get that drainage done the most efficient and best way with the least amount of uh, problems for the townspeople. So just be, be kind, be patient, and we'll get through that. Thank you. I was sitting here thinking Jim and Rusty have the same exact haircut. Uh, <laughs> Got it the same day. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Mrs. Wilson. Yes. Uh, we received a letter from the school district, and I think it's important, so I want to share it with you. It says, Dear Citizens of Hampton, the Hampton Academy Project Advisory Committee cordially invites you to a community forum at Hampton Academy on September 24, 2015, at 7 p.m. in the Eastman Gym. The event is sponsored by the Hampton PTA in an effort to seek public input relative to the building needs at Hampton Academy, both pro programmatically as well as structurally. Members of the Project Advisory Committee will be present, along with Trident Project Advisors, our Owner's Project Manager, and the H.L. Turner Group, our architects engineers for the project. The public will be briefed on existing conditions and limitations at the Academy, and a short update on the work of the committee to date. The public will have an opportunity to ask questions and offer suggestions as the preliminary fact-gathering phase of the project continues. We hope you will be able to join us at the Academy on the 24th. Your input is of great value to the committee and facilitators of this project. Thank you, the Hampton Academy Project Advisory Committee. And the committee really is doing an outstanding job, so it would be exciting if, if people will really show up and contribute. Mr. Bing. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, in uh, the town manager's absence, thanks for a great job of leadership. And uh, uh, I'll piggyback uh, in moving past the buzzkill that uh, people sometimes uh, get on board with. And uh, um, this is a great town. This has been a fabulous summer. It's been an extraordinary uh, summer for weather, a little so slow start. The seafood festival will be interesting to hear those numbers. That went off magnificently. And in the first time in several years, and perhaps a generational shift, we've got uh, a leadership team with department heads that all work together. And you hate to mention it during the summer, but uh, they, they pull through uh, without flaw. And they did that on the heels of a savage winter, and uh, they stepped up magnificently. So it's a magnificent corporation. Uh, and there's magnificent people in this town, and uh, they're all pulling oars. There's a lot of young people. The daycares are full. Uh, you heard uh, the uh, uh, discussion at the Budget Committee from uh, the superintendent, and there's uh, a segue of uh, uh, an ingress for young people. It's difficult for them to afford uh, perhaps when the kids are young, but they definitely uh, move from the hinterlands into this community. It's a desirable community, and young people are moving in here. So. There's just so much stuff that's going on in our own personal lives in this town. Uh, the way this corporation is performing, the way businesses are performing. Uh, you heard uh, comments about fire and code enforcement. And sometimes with a corporation, when you shift, it takes time. But uh, I would give this a strong A. And Mr. Chairman, thank you for your leadership this year. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Moving on to the consent agenda. Number one is request of no objection, Speedway LLC, Anthony Kinney. Number two is release of elderly and disabled tax deferral lien. 
What happened to the Oh, okay, that's the first one. Sorry about that. I'll so move the consent agenda. Second. <clears throat> All those in favor, unanimous. Moving on to appointments, Mr. Nyan, Experience Hampton. Good evening again. I'm going to ask Mr. Olson to join me here because um, I need him for his technical uh, abilities and skill set. I promised uh, Selectman Waddell that I would be uh, brief tonight, knowing that uh, I know that you've been trying to keep to a one hour Selectman's uh, meeting similar to our Beach Commission meetings. So I'll. Uh... Since when are we doing that? <laughs> Anyways, um, if you recall last spring, um, I uh, spoke in front of the uh, Board of Selectmen and asking for a letter of support to, to a proposal that we were submitting into Kenny Bank Savings uh, for a grant to help uh, with Experience Hampton's 2020 fund. I don't think I need to go and explain to anybody here at the Board the 2020 fund, but it's a, the uh, economic development <coughs> engine of Experience Hampton. Uh, that uh, donation did come through with Kenny Bunk, not as much as we had hoped, but they came in with a $5,000 grant, and attached to that were other donations from other uh, groups and individuals in the Hampton community. So that we then felt very comfortable going to um, initiating a 2020 project for 2015. We felt we were going to have enough money to be able to do a, um, a small but very important project. Um, that project, as uh, our proposal to Kenny Bunk uh, indicated, was the pathway between the uh, town parking lot and Lafayette Road uh, next to Greg's uh, uh, Bistro. Throughout the summer, uh, Experience Hampton then had both individual and group meetings with different key individuals from the, uh, the town uh, from uh, the private industry, uh, the uh, business owners, and also the owners of the properties uh, adjacent to that pathway. And then by the end of the summer, the plan started to take a life. And um, we were able then to prepare a, uh, a detailed plan and time frame for us to complete the first 2020 project here in Hampton. Uh, during those months, uh, we established a project team. Um, to focus in on our objectives. That team included members of the uh, Board of Directors of Experience Hampton, uh, people like Rusty Bridle, John Tinius, Kristen Russell. Uh, we included uh, some departments here in the town. Uh, Chris Jacobs, uh, Planning, um, were two very important departments that we worked with during the summer to kind of get ideas and input from. Uh, we brought in Parson Electric because of their strong uh, <coughs> reputation um, and their goodwill here in the community. We brought in Unitil, um, and then we brought in representatives of the four owners. If you recall, that pathway that we're talking about um, is privately owned, but the town does have the right-of-way for that <coughs> pathway. So we did bring in the four owners. Uh, for them to uh, understand what, we try, what we're trying to do and to buy in on our, our, our idea. We also brought in a, a gentleman who's doing some contract work. His name is Tom Wines. Uh, the contracting that he's doing right now is with the Galley Hatch. And if you drive around the Galley Hatch restaurant and see all the new stonework that's being done, uh, <coughs> this is Tom Wines. And then finally, and, and probably the most important person in this project team, is a gentleman on my right, Mark Olson, from Landright LLC. Uh, Mark has volunteered uh, to utilize his expertise and his company to help me in the technical project management side of, of this project, <laughs> and, and also to uh, work on one of the main components of the project, which is landscaping. So what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Mark and have him explain what we would consider the three major objectives of this 2020 project. John, thanks very much. Uh, I've enlarged the drawing that we've been talking about for a while. Maybe it's even excessive, some might say. But uh, I'm sure everyone will be able to see it, people at home. Um, 
the project that you're trying to set off as the example of things that could happen downtown is between the municipal lot and again Greg's Bistro and Route One up here to the to the west. Um, to orient everyone just a little bit, this is an adult daycare facility building here. This is the Greg's Bistro. <coughs> There's an attorney's office here, and then there's a private residence. It's a narrow alley. Um, it is serviced by the town of Hampton during all seasons. Um, early discussion with uh, DPW gave us some of the criteria for the design. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's a long, let's say, derelict landscape down through there. Not very safe, so some of our agenda is to provide better lighting, maybe make it a little more inviting in terms of uh, parking in the municipal lot and then making that connection down through to the to the businesses on Route 1. Um, with the consent of some of the stakeholders, we've met as recently as today, um, there is uh, a pretty well-defined path of, of what can be and what can't be through here. Again, very linear. There's a few opportunities to create some space for people to sit and talk or pass each other and, and step out of the way and, and um, get involved maybe a little bit and, and, and utilize this space better than it's being utilized now. Um, I think that at either end there's been some discussion about some kind of overhead structure, if you will, something that kind of celebrates the, each end of it. Uh, so that's on our minds as well as the pavement, the lighting, the gateway. Yep. And uh, I think that we've gotten a lot of buy-in from both the stakeholders, the other people that John's mentioned, Unitil, Parsons, uh, the contractor that will be involved in the pavement, certainly DPW has risen to the occasion to help us in here. So uh, kind of a neat project, hoping to do it right as the first example of things that might happen. So it's very much on our minds to do this uh, to the best of our ability. Thank you, Mark. You're very welcome. Now, since it was really important to get some of the opinions and recommendations from key individuals, I already mentioned some meetings that we've had with some town officials, uh, Chris Jacobs in, 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 in particular. Uh, we also met, as, as late as today, Kevin Schultz. Kevin was kind enough to meet us down there at 8 o'clock this morning and, and, and walked the site with us and gave us some input and ideas. And at the end of the conversation, he thought it was a great idea. He accepted all of our uh, ideas and recommendations of what we wanted to do. Um, so he had indicated to me that he was giving his full support to this project. We also, um, since we do have Mr. Merrill um, on our board of directors, um, he had recommended that we take out an insurance policy um, for liability, which we did. Uh, so uh, during the construction uh, period, uh, we, will have, we will be covered uh, from a liability perspective for insurance. Um, now, going back to Chris for a minute uh, and his office, we were able to establish how the town could partner with us on this project. It was all agreed, pending the town manager and the board of selectmen, that they would provide the following services. One, they would help us establish a barrier, kind of work under construction uh, at both ends of the walkway to block off uh, the pathway during the uh, time of construction. Two, they would coordinate all of the activities with DigSafe. Three, to be responsible for the, um, the digging up of the pathway from the town parking lot all the way down to Lafayette Road, removing all of the, the tar and, and, and the hot top, and, and et cetera. Um, and then four, to prepare the pathway foundation for the underground electrical work that will be needed, the curbing on both sides, and for the installation of the pavers. To complete the project after Department of Public Works efforts, we will be providing pathway lighting, similar to what you see at the fire station down here on Winnicunit. Uh, the landscaping lights, uh, we were first thinking about uh, lamppost similar to what you see over at Depot Square, but we were then very sensitive to the people that were actually living and the light shining into the homes and the properties. Uh, we, we, we found, and, and Mark actually found a, 
uh, a very reasonable cost uh, light, uh, four or five of them will do the trick. And they do, how, how far do they expand? Um, I, I don't know that I have that okay. job right. Let's say in a five to six foot radius with the light on the ground. So we're, we're going to have that lighting, um, curbing, landscaping, and what I would call two lighted arbors, one at each end, uh, that would be then done by Mark and his company. Um, Parson Electric will do all the electrical work. Um, and then finally, the pavers will come in uh, to install the walkway in pavers rather than hot topping it. Timeline for this project, very aggressive. Um, we plan to kick off the project on the week of October 5th and complete the project by October 30th. Uh, we plan to actually have a ceremonial kickoff on October 2nd, which we will invite all of you once we get the uh, details completed. So long story short, we would like the Board of Selectmen to take a formal vote of approval for this uh, to ha for this to take place and uh, to indicate in this vote of approval your support behind this project, including the involvement of your departments, including Department of Public Works, Planning, and the Building Inspection, uh, Inspection Office. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Mr. Bridal. Well, obviously I, I've had some dealings with this. Um, I've walked out a number of times, and if you go down there now, you will see a number of water shutoffs that are up through the thing, a number, uh, number of very yeah. hazardous trip areas. Um, this is a sidewalk that the town is responsible for. Uh, we maintain it, we plow it, it's, it's the access through. Um, I think this is a, a great project. Um, I think a lot of forethought has gone into it. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to dress up downtown for the start to dress up some of that area down there. But it also, it, it, it deals with some of the things that we've, we've talked about at this meeting before is, is some of our sidewalks and the, and the shape they're in and this is going to take care of one of them. It's a built small baby step, but I think it's a step in the right direction. Mrs. Wolseley. Uh, I'll second you, Rusty, on, on getting the project going. Um, are ta you talking pervious pavers, gentlemen? Uh, not to this point, Mary Louise. Um, we don't know there to be any drainage issues through there, necessarily. Okay. Um, but it still it would give you some... It's a tight pavement. It's a very durable pavement that... Um, okay. Um, I don't know that a lot of water goes through there. I think to do a permeable pavement, which actually we hadn't talked about, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be all for it, but uh, um, certainly conservation would be all for it. Yeah. It would be a pretty a good size additional cost. For you. Um, that area certainly needs to be cleaned up. It's terrible walking and all lumpy and, and the gravel and whatever. It's a real mess. So that really looks terrific. Great job. And I can't believe you jump into it so quickly. Mr. Bean. Your last again, Jim. Um, <laughs> John, Mark, thanks for the presentation. And the, uh, I see the Public Works Director in the back. As long as he's two thumbs up, uh, he's one thumb up, he's two thumbs up, I'm good to go. Thank you. Okay. okay. Mr. Waddell. I, I think it's a <clears throat> phenomenal idea. And obviously, you've done a lot of your homework, which is good. Um, and because I always say when I walk through there from the, you know, when you park in the municipal and then you walk through there, it's like, well, look, oh. this place is really ugly. But I mean, so I mean, it really help attract people to park there and then go downtown. I think that's great. And, it, you know, thanks, Mark, for your expertise. I think wanting to stay positive, but you need a lot of expertise to help John with the technical part. <laughs> <laughs> You've been through this. <laughs> thanks, Mr. Waddell. You'll be fine. I would just like to say, you know, over the 11 years that I've been here on the selectmen, this has been brought up many times to do this. This is the first time it's ever gone forward, so congratulations. Thank you. You move. So I, I will make the motion as Mr. Uh, Nyan had presented it, that the board, the board will uh, throw their support behind it, not only with, with the board's support, but with the support of the, uh, the departments, right. uh, both public works and uh, building and whatever else they need. 
You'd like to second, Mrs. Wolseley? Yep. All those in favor? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Scott, Thank you. before you go, are you going to mention the meeting with Chris Sununu on the 29th? Might be a good time. Um, I can. If you don't mind, um, is that nope. all right? The, um, good it's, it's just more of a, a, a town announcement that on the 29th um, at the uh, Seashell, the uh, New Hampshire Department of Transportation uh, will be hosting a regional meeting uh, on the 10-year transportation uh, plan. Uh, these are presentations that are held throughout the state, and it's usually the uh, executive counselor in that region that is the host. So in this particular case, it will be uh, executive counsel Chris Sununu. It's going to take place at 7 o'clock uh, a week from tomorrow night um, at the seashell uh, in the, uh, the room upstairs. Um, and th there's a couple of uh, items on the transportation uh, plan that have to do with Hampton, uh, one of which is the, uh, the bridge, um, and one has to do with the reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard. So those are two very important uh, discussion points for that meeting and uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission will be planning to be making a presentation there um, and I would encourage all of the selectmen to, to, to come if you can. Yeah. And what was the date again? The 29th. It's a Tuesday night. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Moving on to old business. Number one is scheduled for the 2016 budget work sessions. Mr. Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before uh, you're all aware of the schedule that went out September 28th mm -hmm. for uh, Parks and Recreation, DPW, October 5th to discuss police and fire, and September 30th uh, for the remaining budgets. Uh, there was a request from Mrs. Wolseley to put this on for discussion tonight, so we put it to the agenda for your discussion. Okay. Mr. Bridal. Well, I think we've, uh, I think, uh, although the town manager is not here tonight, he's still on his vacation. Uh, he's come up with a list of, of how he wants to do it. Um, I think he knows his departments pretty well. I think if if we need to if, if that schedule works that we can get it done at that point in time, I have no problem with that. I'm sure that if we find out going through it, if we have more questions, we can always come back for a different night. And so I think the schedule that we have now that he's presented is just fine. If I may jump in real quick and add one yes. more piece of information. Um, I think it may help the board in general to understand the direction the manager is headed with the overall budget, as you recall, for some of the direction from last year. In general, the goal is, that what he's, he's done, is kept the budget as near to zero increase over last year as possible. And many of those other issues, we've had discussions about whether or not they should be included or not are being moved to warrant articles. And looking at that budget, I think that's where most of the issues that our, our large discussions is going to be focused as warrant articles, which will come at a later date. So I think the general budget we'll see, while not to say that they're not important, we're not going to see dramatic shifts in any of those budgets coming from what you used to, uh, just for your consideration. Mrs. Walsley. Yeah, I was just concerned because for a department the size of public works, I thought it was pretty tricky to try to squeeze them in to one night not just by themselves, but with another department, so. Yeah, I know Fred's belief is that where DPW is not one of the larger departments, certainly I don't want to, you know, say that nothing's important, they're all very important, but um, the time spent on that budget, given the, the lack of differential from last year, he feels very confident that you'll be able to go through those sufficiently and understand where we're going when you get your books, where, the, where our focus will end up being, I think, this year, a lot of our attention will towards that Warren article end of things and what you want to do as a board with those issues. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. I just looked at that and I said, boy, the two on one night it Understood. sounded kind of scary. Yep. And, and if need be, we can always reschedule that for an additional night if that's required. Uh, but he feels pretty confident we'll be able to accomplish your goals in that time frame. And I will point out, we will not be making a budget. We will be preparing a statement of requested expenditures and uh, anticipated revenues. Understood. The Budget Committee makes the budget. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bean. Yeah, uh, you're the chairman, uh, the town manager, department heads work the budget. You're going to see the budget that comes forward uh, be uh, short change for an increase from last year's uh, the Warren article uh, uh, scheme and maneuver uh, for uh, the voters to choose what they want for their town, I think is a great idea. When you look at the history of defaults here, it, uh, it separates the wheat from the chafe, 
and uh, voters can take a hard look at what they want. So uh, it gives um, uh, taxpayer groups uh, a chance to support Warren articles or not, uh, and uh, it gives the budget a little breathing room. So I think it's a great, uh, great way to go forward. It's my fourth budget. At the end of the day, it's a $26 million budget. There uh, is very little wiggle room in this budget. Uh, things are pretty much fixed. Uh, we've got some union negotiations. We've got uh, costs that we cannot control that are mandated by law that uh, sometimes increase, sometimes like health insurance decrease. But um, I don't see uh, uh, any reason to uh, um, meet excessively, and I don't think there's going to be any stark surprises this year. I have the confidence in your chairmanship, uh, the department heads, and Mr. Welch's leadership. Thank you. Mr. Wardell. Uh, I agree with what Rusty said, that if we – that if we get into a situation where we need more questions or more time, we can always e extend it or ask for another session to do it. Uh, I, th I think we can go with the schedule as is. That's what I think. And I also agree to that. Um, <clears throat> so any further questions about the? No. no? Okay, <clears throat> moving on to the annual leaf collection. Are you going to join us at the table? We had a discussion earlier today and I asked them to put together a tentative schedule so that you can take a look at it for what leaf collection will be. Good. We like now, to if you don't have the right answers, there will be a lot of people complaining. <laughs> you had the right <laughs> answer with me today. We'll pick up when we have to. That was pretty much what he said. <laughs> well, that's, that's, what's a, that's a good answer. <laughs> And I will add, as long as we have the money, we'll pick up the yes. money. Well, I did uh, a little bit of research. Um, went back through Teresa's uh, records. Uh, she keeps, uh, say, an immaculate set of uh, records, but you can go back through. She has what she calls a tickler file. Uh, reminds her of things that need to get done on a, on a timely basis. I went back as far as 2007. It always appeared to start on or about the 1st of November, whether that was a Monday or Tuesday, um, and that it ran for approximately one to two weeks. But I did notice that last year in the, in the, uh, in the labor summaries that I get, daily reports I get from Frank's uh, section, is that they were still even picking up leaves on the 17th and 18th, meaning a number of people have called. Um, I understand it's been a drier summer. It may start sooner. Uh, lack of moisture makes the chlorophyll stop, ceases. The leaves could drop earlier. If they drop earlier, we'll react to it. Uh, if they drop like they normally do, we'd stick with the first or second week. Um, we're also very understanding that um, not everyone if you will, makes the cutoff. In other words, it's not a defined, um, you know, you're not going to get shut off from, from leaf collection. Um, I recall a woman over on Fairfield a couple of years ago stopped to talk to her about her driveway. Garage door was open. I said, what are all those bags for? Are you collect keeping your leaves? And she said, no, I recently had a medical issue. And she said, and my nephew doesn't drive. He did it also. We've been storing them, and I said, no, don't, that's a fire hazard. We don't store leaves inside the garage. We just went right over with a pickup truck and, and took them all. I mean, it just, the department's here to serve the residents. Uh, the reason why we schedule it in the first week of November, and we follow, if you will, the leaf truck just follows the refuse trucks, same routes. Mm -hmm. So Monday route, then Tuesday route, then Wednesday route. Whatever we miss next week, you'll find that the route will go quicker and shorter. And then we just basically rely on, and I'm sure Frank did it those two days, because he had a number of calls. Hey, uh, I got my cousin to come up, or my niece and nephew came up, and they raked the yard this weekend for us. Finally, uh, can you come get the lease? And we just write them all down, and they go. They get them. So it's not a, um, we kind of like to stick with the first to second week, but if, it, if we need to mo roll sooner, we'll just, we'll roll sooner. And we'll just kind of stick with the advertisement and, I think Hopefully this is a good chance to uh, develop a positive feedback from the community. And I think you, that you <laughs> have voice, that you have the right uh, 
idea that that this is how it should be. Yeah, and sir. We do the same thing with Christmas trees, you know. A lot of people the day after they, they drop them. Uh, I was raised Catholics, it's 12 days of Christmas after the 25th. <laughs> you didn't take the tree down until it was really fire hazard. Um, so, you know, we still find, you know, and the guys will call back, hey, we got two Christmas trees down in the snowbank over in 26 Esker. Okay, fine, we just go over and get them. No big deal. You know, it's just while somebody's out on the route. If we know, we'll just go get them. Thank you. Mr. Bridal. No, I think uh, Chris has done a great job running his department so far, and if this is his plan, then, then I think we need to let him Also, follow there's his plan. a number of people that, because it's been in, done that way so many years in a row, they're mentally Scheduled expecting Correct. the 1st of November. Very good. Okay. Mrs. Walsh, I, I, I asked about this, Chris, because first of all, I hate to see bags of leaves that stand there for several weeks in a row and get all messed up. I have a big American trunk in my car, and while I'm not happy to be doing it, I stuck, stick the leave bags in my car and drive them down myself. Yep. But for older people, some older people don't have cars or trucks that could accommodate, and it's, it's messy when you're leaving yep. those uh, things by the side of the road, and then they get all soggy, and then they blow all over the place and whatever. Right. So I thought it seemed, I mean, I have leaves starting to fall in my yard now because everything's been so dry. Yep. So uh, Yeah, whatever. if they fall over a lengthy period that it requires, <clears throat> not every, everyone's different. Some will be a short one mm -hmm. stop one time. Others it just, ne November seemed to me like pretty late, but. Yep. Well, the people on Winnicott kind of Road I know with the big maple trees, they yeah. they probably, it's a one month ordeal for them. Yeah. Understandable. So I can just call down and whine and sound pathetic. All right. No, just you know, it's 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 a service call like any other service call. Mr. Bean. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director, I uh, observed the groundbreaking at uh, 2130 last night at the uh, intersection of uh, High Street and uh, Route 1. Hampton Police was doing a great job. Uh, there's brand new gear out there. There were seven men, one uh, one woman. Great, great job. Great. Uh, staging area on High Street, so that thing's very well put together. I have no questions on leaves. Thank you. Mr. Wardell. I love the leaves when they're on the tree. When they turn color, they're beautiful. When they fall, I hate them. I was, when I lived in Massachusetts, I had a huge lawn. I always <laughs> hoped it would snow on top of them so I could <laughs> leave them there until it's green. They're doing a good job. Let's not hope for that this year. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nay, nay on the snow. So it sounds like... Um, Everyone's very supportive of that. And any, are we having any other questions for the DPW director? We, he's here in the next issue under new business number one as well. Yeah. Approval so you might as well just stay there right for a few minutes. Okay. Um, other old business, Mr. Bridal? Nothing at this time. Mrs. Wellesley. Yeah, the, the letter from the gentleman at Reddington Landing dated September 4th on the uh, Southeast Regional Refuse Disposal District um, Hazardous Waste Collection. I think there was some confusion, obviously, from the memo, there was certainly some confusion there. Are we going to have specifics now? Because I, I was a little annoyed when I first read this that we reimbursed the gentleman for <coughs> what he paid to go over to Brentwood and dispose of his material. But are we making it clear to everyone now that there will be, that if you go to Brentwood, you can go to Brentwood, but you'll have to pay. And we're going to still have a hazardous clear waste. Clear is a separate issue as far as what the new hazardous waste. I got a notice from the people that just ran the one in Brentwood that five residents of Hampton showed up. Yeah. They just accepted it. Uh, well, it, di it didn't amount to. I don't know why he was at wanting to be reimbursed. They didn't send us a bill. Oh. Uh, and, huh. and the. the uh, so th th it was apparently small amounts, either a single gallon of paint or oh, okay. whatever, and they just Ignored elected it. it was going to take more work to Okay, we're to still going to have our own collection we in the spring? We are going to have our own, right. right Same here. company, be in the springtime. Um, it is in my budget, and I do have a, uh, backup information on that when it comes okay. time for the budget presentation. I Mr. Bean. No, sir, no comment. Mr. Waddell? No. I have one more under old business yeah. related to Chris, if it's or actually related to Chris and related to us. 
Mr. Keefe retired on disability after 37 years of working for this town. I brought this up a couple of weeks ago, and I want to know what we are doing as a board to say thank you to this gentleman. I know you indicated doing something within the department, yep. but I think it's pretty um, annoying, disgusting to not recognize an employee. Why don't you ask Mr. Desk. Welch when he's here? Maybe I have he, asked. I okay, said well, he's not here tonight. I know. Okay, I let's know. bring it up when Mr. Welch is here. Thank you. I thought I had included that in my email because you okay, said... Okay, Mr. Welch is not here tonight. But you let's said bring to email up. things to you for okay. the agenda. Okay, Mr. Welch wasn't here last week. He's not here tonight. Now let's just wait till he comes back. Thank you. And um, moving on to new business, um, number one is the approved agreement for a 150-day demonstration of sludge pump WWTP, a purchasing policy waiver section 71-3. <clears throat> semicolon 718-4 period A semicolon 718-16. Yeah, there's a number of waivers requested and let me explain what's going on. Um, well, it's been almost three years now. Uh, we put in the new dewatering press, the Fournier press. At that time, part of the discussion revolved around that um, the performance issue was with any of those presses is based upon the consistent and constant flow of sludge to the press. If it gets interrupted for any reason, airlock or something of that nature, the, the press will kick off in the middle of the night. As you know, we don't staff the, the press all night long. We don't staff the facility all night long. But the press does, in fact, run for about 16 hours a day. So if we started at 7 in the morning, we'll run all day and all night, and it'll automatically fill both boxes. Back then, we did not have the funds available at the time to um, order in new sludge pumps. What they do is they take the active sludge right from the plant. They also take what we call the thickened sludge. There's a storage building out back. There's a mixture. Uh, basically, we try and do a, sometimes it's a 60-40, sometimes it's a 50-50. It changes seasonally. Um, so the pumps that we've had are uh, older. They're very expensive to maintain. Um, give you, an, for instance, and I know I've had to sign purchase orders for at least six. Uh, the current pumps have a hose, a very short section of hose, but it's a hi very high pressure section of hose. It costs $3,800 to replace. Each pump, and there's two pumps. Each one goes through at least a one hose section per year and that whole section isn't any longer than my arms so it's a very expensive it also cost uh, five hundred dollars for the lube and installation kit every time we need to replace it it also takes the pump out for a full day and it takes two persons to replace that piece of equipment the new pumps that we'd like to put in are the ones that were recommended by the Fournier distributor to begin with in the Fournier company because they provide a more constant consistent sludge to the press. Um, the benefit of doing it this way is we will, they'll install at their cost that pump for 150 days. We don't have to pay for it. They'll tweak it, make sure it works, that we're satisfied with it. Then when it, at the end of the 150 days, we have a choice. We can either say, didn't work out as we thought, take that one out. We only have to pay a $2,500 cleaning fee for it, or we can say we like it, it's doing what it's supposed to do, our press is operating better, we pay them the, the cost of the memo that I don't have, $19,005. So uh, we either get something that we really like or we get some, or we have the right to back out. The reason why I recommended it come to the Board of Selectmen is three things. Uh, it's a proprietary uh, sole source item, comes only from Penn Valley. Um, that type of pump, so it, it did not go up to bid. Um, part of the one of the three waivers that we asked you for is to, in fact, recognize that it was a sole source provider, and uh, allow us to work with that particular contractor. And the other thing is, it's over the fifteen thousand dollar limit, um, which 
is also one of the bidding requirement levels. So that's the whole reason, try to be succinct, as to why we brought this forward to the board in the manner that we did. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Waddell, would you like to? If there's nobody else that makes it, I mean, this, or is this the one? We'll make this kind of pump. Okay. This particular kind of pump. We're, the, the, the guys are excited about this particular pump because uh, it has a smaller motor, uses less electricity. Um, a number of the other um, wastewater treatment plants in New England that also have a Fournier pump have also married a Fournier dewatering press, have also married this particular kind of pump and size pump to their press. Very satisfied with it. Matter of fact, uh, three or four of the staff took a field trip to Saco, Maine to see their Penn Valley pumps and their Fournier press. And um, they're very satisfied with it. They've had no issues with it at all. And they're expecting that we're going to get a better flow, if you will, of sludge delivery to the, to the press. So it'll help us maintain. We've been getting a good uh, cake percentage, if uh, probably most people would know, but the cake that we were getting out before was 20% solids, 80% water. We put this press in. It now gets regularly 24 and even up to 30%, depending on day of the week, polymer, number of other things. What that relates to is the, m the more water we squeeze out, the less we pay waste management. That's really what it gets down to. So I won't, I won't go on the record as saying that the $19,005 will actually pay for itself. It well over, let's say, a five-year period in not having to replace the hoses, downtime, and increased performance on the press. So for us, it's a win-win. It's a Thank you. Mr. Bridal. I think the uh, Public Works Director has done his homework, uh, obviously. But I'll give the credit to Mike Doobie. He, he well, really did all the legwork to this and well, run I'm the messenger. And kudos to Mike. Yeah. I think uh, there are some things that you, you buy out there that are, that are single source. Mm -hmm. uh, when you buy a car, you can't buy a, a Chevy and put Ford products on it. You can, but it's not going to work right. Uh, I think uh, this has been designed to have that specific pump, and it, it's a single source, and it, it's the right way to go. You also mentioned that it's a smaller motor, so it potential is there for some savings with electrical. It's electricity. And so uh, I think we should go for it. If I could just emphasize one other yes. point that <coughs> you're, you're get, we're getting a 150-day test drive yeah. basically on this piece of Correct. equipment for very small money. So I think that's absolutely an outstanding uh, opportunity for us. Thank you. Mrs. Wilsley. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that we didn't go with that motor when we put the press in. That's a beautiful press. That works so nicely, and I think it's great that you're going this route to pair it up with its proper equipment. Well, I just remember it was a project that <coughs> Keith and I had inherited, and it, you know, it was originally scoped out at 1.3 yeah. mil, but there was a number of other things that were on the shopping list, and this is one of them that took a... It wasn't explicitly stated in it but it wasn't explicitly excluded either but when push came down to shove it was like do what do what the warrant article says and this is stick to the scope. Mr. Bean. Director great work uh, the uh, purchasing policy uh, sections that uh, you've delineated uh, are well noted it's great to have a tight purchasing policy Subject to your comments, Mr. Chairman, I would move that we purchase the $19,005 Penn Valley pump subject to a 150-day trial, and if not accepted, is returned for $2,500 fee. I'll second. Yeah. We have a first and we have a second. Uh, I would just like to talk first. Thank you very much. It sounds like you've done a great job with the help of Mr. Doobie and um, I'm glad to see that there's some action down there, on, particularly on this issue. Uh, any questions, um, discussion for the motion? Anyone? All those in favor? Unanimous. Before he goes. Okay. Did you want to ask something before he goes? I have a couple. Okay. If I may. Um, we got that's the selection. On the auction items, Chris, because we've got the list, 
um, the <coughs> items to be kept. So this is uh, are on the bottom, the six items. So these are items that are usable that have been what turned in by people or other departments put them on the list. Other departments is to be kept right. instead of putting up for auction. Uh, so there's nothing in the list. You've got 37 well miscellaneous office items, but you're comfortable with the with the other items, items that, that are listed yeah. on here. Okay, that's good to know. Um, there's a letter dated September 3rd on the pipe, uh, stormwater drainage pipe, the 15-inch vitrified clay pipe from Lafayette Road going toward the B&M property. Has this been taken care of? Where are you on it? Um, I believe, isn't that part of the high Lafayette Street? It doesn't give, it gives an address of the people who own it down in Lincoln, Mass., but all it says is water from Lafayette Road westerly toward the B&M property. That's the High and Lafayette Street project. Yeah. yeah. That was the notification letter that Jennifer put out. Is that done or in the process? In the process. Or? In the process. Yep. Okay, because that sounds good. And my last uh, thought. On the asphalt paving, because we had some, we had some mix-ups on this, and I have been getting questions, and I just don't want to, I don't want to mess it up. But the bid, there we go. The paving bid um, was put out uh, on the 4th of May. <coughs> and that's where we got the figure of $105,000 for the Fairfield, Ruth, and Belmont. And Exeter Road. And I remember saying that night that I thought that was um, not very much money, and I guess a couple of other members of the board walked out and said, gee whiz, that sounds funny. Um, I, ex I asked you when I talked to you, and you explained that the per, per linear foot price or whatever it is that was included in that bill was extended to the additional work that GMI did on the Exeter Road. So we, we got the same dollar value. Yeah. To finish the paving. My my concern is this, <coughs> and sometimes you know, sitting here on Monday nights, I don't think of things fast either. But I think that we did grant a waiver. We waived the purchasing policy due to less than three bidders, and the purchasing policy requires that the board be advised and had concurrent sought in the award of bids that exceed fifty thousand dollars, and we did vote that. Um, the manager said that night that it was a very good price, but I mentioned that I thought it was very low. Uh, well, I is think this, we should have had, well, truly, because I don't like to be left in the dark. In but, this. but is this under new business? Is this under? Well, Chris is here, and I'm, I'm well, asking. Can I, can, I think I can answer the question. Put it on for next week. I think it would help, because I don't always remember every little detail. I think a follow-up um, request to waive the bid process or to explain, because I didn't understand it until I talked to you. I had an opportunity to talk to you personally, but I have had questions right. on that. When I came in a couple of weeks ago, I uh, requested the uh, permission to proceed forward on Toll Farm Road. I think yes. part of the discussion or explanation there was, yes, CMA engineers had estimated that Exeter Road would take 320 in, in dollar value to do. Right, within the We grant. spent about 310. Um, and I can get you, uh, Jennifer has kept track of the dollars and cents mm -hmm. for me. Uh, I can give you a, an itemized breakdown of that. Mm -hmm. Where the difference occurred was, for instance, they put in for 1,500 square yards, square yards uh, three by three is one square yard. In the bid they put in for 1,500, we actually milled 15,000 right. square yards. Right. So that those, so the unit price is held we modified the quantities to achieve the desired result. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I can account for what the original bid number was, and, or bid values, and what that we used those values, but the quantity amounts did change. Right, and I think that night we were also told there was an extra 5,000 that needed we, to be. We, 5,000 we held off for for, finishing, back for uh, finishing work. Or 
put in the shoulders. Yeah. I think it came to like 3,800. Don't hold me to that. I, I know we didn't go over the five. Yeah. I, I can get that number from, from I, I agree with you. I will give you a summation memo. Yeah, I appreciate And put that, that to, to, to close that project out to tell you how it finally ended up. That's great. Same thing on, um, I know the requisition went through today for a toll farm road that was done for 165 and some change. Mm -hmm. I have 6,500 magical dollars left. Yeah. It looks which nice. Which we were going to spend over there. on. Because I was over there on Saturday and the road looks very nice. Okay. And, I, and I'm not trying to be critical. I think it would help me because. No, I'm, I think you I I'm think the, the town should get. Okay. Yeah, back. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I would just like to say that um, I think you, the, uh, I went down Exeter Road today and it really does look wonderful. Um, it's amazing when you compare what was done there compared to the price of 5,200,000. 5.8 million. 5.8. Five, was it 5.8? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, you know, I wish there were more roads in Hampton that looked like Exeter Road. So thank you very much. I, I, I have and, two more for Chris. Okay. I, you may want to get to the football game, but. No, 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 no. Mrs. Wolseley. Are they have to do with what's on the agenda here? Because. They have to do with the public works director who's sitting here looking very nice and patient. And I just have two quick questions. It's an hour away. Yeah. It's okay. Air are, handling system, is it all installed yet, Chris? You have to ask Mike. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Because that's These critical. are questions that, that he can. He's okay. Well, okay. you might as well hear it, and we're dealing with this in public. I can go running around and asking him questions, but I'd rather clarify. And the other thing is Dalton Road, uh, because I'm getting a lot of complaints on that. That's still private. That's not been accepted the by the town. The town has not officially accepted I talked to road. Brendan McNamara about that Saturday when we were on our site walk. Do you guys keep track of whether when the bond is released? Because the bond is probably long since the bond's gone. long released on yeah. that one. That was a 2011. Well, I guess uh, he's dead now. But yeah, yeah. Legal department is handling that. That's it has to do with legal the and planning deals with bond release. So we're still, right. focus, so we're right. still focusing on. Well, that. to the extent that we have an opportunity to do something, <laughs> yeah. I and think that was aware. on your list that you were yeah. seeking further information that we're putting off for the 28th, I believe, is where yeah. it was. And you're, so we, we uh, answered your, uh, you're aware of the conditions on that. Road. We answered your uh, questions that you raised last week. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Sullivan sent you a letter, and you have had most of these answers. I guess you didn't get the one about the 37-year retirement. No, I hadn't seen that as part of that I one, but I think that was something else you discussed before. Probably three or four weeks yeah. ago. Uh, yeah. I did see will be back. Uh, Mr. And I know Welch you had put, told me you guys were there was a pla I got to pick out the frame. I would just like everyone to know that Mrs. Wolseley's uh, questions were all answered to her. A letter was sent to her by the assistant town manager. When? Thank you. You had an email scheduled on that list you sent of what you want to put on the uh, agenda. Okay, I'll check. We sent I'll you check. back a response on each of those. Okay. Okay. Check your emails and you'll get the answer. I believe I had checked, but I will. And then okay, I thank you very much. We appreciate that you came Thanks. in tonight. Yes. Have a good evening. Thank Thanks, Chris. Chris. Thanks, Buzz. Moving on to uh, the acceptance of a $1,000 donation from Smutty Nose Rock Best Half Marathon 5K. So this is an additional, uh, Ms. Martin is still uh, away at a conference returning tomorrow, I believe. So this is uh, a, a, a Smutty Nose, which we uh, authorized running the parking lots that this should be re revenue will generate. This is a specific donation that in addition to that, that they want to make to the town to help uh, with rec department programs. And we would recommend that the board vote to accept that donation. Make the motion that we accept it. Second. Does anyone have any questions? Mrs. Wellesley? I assume you did get my the emails that I forwarded to you from the lady who was who had a complaint on closing off the roads for the race. Yes, and we and I believe we discussed <laughs> that back in the spring when mm -hmm. we talked about this then. But I just wanted you to see because she was upset, so I forwarded them. Okay. Okay. All those in favor and against? Every it's unanimous. Any other new business? Mr. Waddell? No. Mr. Bridal? No. Mrs. Wellesley? Yes. Did any or all of you watch the budget committee meeting on the 15th? I watched part of it. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to make a motion, but I want to make a couple of comments first. Uh, the selectman representative to the Municipal Budget Committee did not arrive at that meeting. Pardon until me, about Mr. Mr. I'm, no, I'm no, going to no, grab the floor. No. Point of order here. No. Point no. of order here. No. no. I'm the budget rep to this. Yes. It's your decision. Wait a minute. I'll brief the Budget Committee right now. No, no, no. I'm just... I started. What's your call? I started. Well, this. Let's uh, let her have her say because she's going to have it. Uh, yes, so I'm going to have it. Let's just let her have it. All right, Mr. Chairman, Mr. I've got an appointment. Good night. See, picks up his toys and leaves. That's what he did. Mrs. Wilsley, do you tonight. have? Do you want to comment? No, I do want to comment. Okay, then comment because and let's I am hear a member what your of comment this board, is. And we have a, we have a significant problem, I think, <clears throat> with the budget committee. Uh, Brian uh, can, was sitting there and I think he knows where I'm coming from. Our representative is not attending many of the meetings. He's attending them late. He attended that meeting and that was the school recap. Every September, because of the school budget year, which ends on June 30th, the budget committee has called in the school board and the school representatives, the superintendent and business administrator, to give a recap of the prior year. When you are sitting on the Municipal Budget Committee, you're responsible for participating in three budget processes, the town, the school district, and the precinct. And you're expected to learn while you're sitting at that table with the Municipal Budget Committee so that you can make intelligent decisions when those budgets are coming up. Um, Mr. Bean came in about two minutes before the 10-minute recess was called. He stayed for about four and a half minutes and had a, a um, brief exchange with the chairman, picked up his bag and left, just like he did tonight. He's done that before. He has not attended a couple of meetings at all. I'm going to make a motion for you. Well, first... Please make your motion. <clears throat> wait one minute. Please make your motion. I am a confounded member of this board, and I'm going to say what I came here to say. The Budget Committee has powers that are stipulated under RSA 32, when to post public hearings, uh, what to do about the budget, deliberative sessions, providing signed copies to everyone. But it does not stipulate to the Budget Committee how it conducts its meetings and how it arrives at its conclusions. My sense in watching the Budget Committee and I have tremendous respect for the Budget Committee because I've served with the Budget Committee far longer than all of you put together. Uh, my sense is that the Budget Committee may be on the cusp of saying, phooey, we're tired of the disrespect, and they could literally convene in October, sit down, set a lump sum figure to go to the deliberative session, and there's nothing to stop them from doing that. I, I think, have a point of order. I, think I know. That, I've I, had, I, I'm not here I, to, yeah. to deal I with assumptions. And, and, and think, you speaking I, for people. I think I'm Mrs. Wolseley, I would like to point I'm out to you. Of first of all, Mrs. Wolseley, no. no. First of all, there Mrs. Wolseley, I would a, like. Mrs. Wolseley, please. That is a big you do not have the floor, Mrs. Wolseley. I, I would like to point to you that you were the Budget Committee representative. You chose to give it up. Because so of the give disrespect from this board. Okay, Mrs. Now, Wolseley. Every, I will you, make a you motion. Have, you make your we, motion, fine. That we remove Mr. Bean as our representative. This is your specialty, unit. removing people? Well, yes, when they act in certain Mrs. fashions. Mrs. Wolseley, make I'm, your, let's, I'm making my please motion. Please make it, and let's Thank see if you get a second. Removing. Uh, Mr. Bean as our representative to the Municipal Budget Committee and asking Mr. Bridal, who does not lose his temper or stalk out, ask Mr. Bridal to take over as our representative. I think what's happening at this point in time is an egregious breach of the public trust. Don't all the hands go up at once. I would like to point out that um, Mr. Pierce uh, voiced his opinion that he doesn't actually have to be there. Um, and I don't know if there is a place that says, that gives a definitive answer to this, but uh, 
I don't think it's fair for anyone to assume, and I don't think it's ever fair, and any time I've been on any boards that I've been on, you don't speak for other people <clears throat> unless they've given you a piece of paper signed that you're speaking for them. Otherwise, you shouldn't be speaking for the budget committee. You're not on the budget committee. I'm not speaking for the budget committee. Well, you've, you're speaking am, for the sense. What I am telling, I'm telling you what I am observing is a disgrace. Is there a second to I, her motion? Of course not. Mrs. Wolseley, that's I, it. There is no second to your motion. The representative from this board is supposed to sit there Mrs. and represent Wolseley. us. This Mrs. Wolseley. This is a disgrace. And don't Mrs. say I didn't Wolseley, warn you. Mrs. Wolseley, thank you. Moving on, does anyone else have any new business? Further, would they like to speak? Well, we can run home and watch the football. Great. Do you like football that much that you want to run home? Yeah, I know. I assume you do. Well, I don't, I don't watch football, Mrs. Wellesley. And I, you're, again, you're talking for other people. Oh, my God. So please, any other closing comments? I'd like to make, Mr. Waddell. I'd like to make closing comment that, that we're just getting distracted. We're not dealing with the town's business. That's what we're here for. We're not here to make assumptions about what other boards might do or might <coughs> not do. We're not here to be throwing daggers at people. If there is a problem with the representatives of the budget committee, the chairman should look into it, and that's it. And if there is no, no requirement that they spend exact amount of time at the budget committee, then that's it. It can be watched on. TV, it can be watched on streaming video. Um, I was the chairman's, the selectman's rep last year. I had a very difficult time sitting through some meetings that just seemed to go on and on and on. And I don't want to talk about other committees, though, but uh, that's not the way it should be. And we should not be throwing daggers at people. We should be minding our own business and our own responsibilities. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Bridal. Yes, we, you know, we, we've, we've set up a process how um, we've asked and sent it through our, our uh, representative to the Budget Committee. Um, there was some accusations made at that meeting, um, and I'm not going to get into them, but I noticed the fact that we had this month, this, this week, we had some questions from the IT Committee, the IT Subcommittee. I see that they were answered in a very timely manner. Um, I think that's the way the process is supposed to work. Uh, I think there's a whole lot to do about nothing with a lot of this stuff. Uh, you know, Mrs. Wolseley has talked about rolling stock once or a thousand times. Uh, we don't even know what rolling stock that the Public Works is looking to get rid of. We haven't got that in the budget yet. How can, how can we have questions on, on stuff that's being replaced that we don't even know yet? That we have some department heads that we've asked them to do their budgets. They are coming through in a new process. Let's let that work. Let's work this down. Let cooler heads prevail, and let's move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. And Chairman, for letting me come back. If I may, uh, I know um, I was a subject. I had to cancel a, an appointment, a date, if you will. So I'm mm -hmm. back. Uh, and uh, uh, apparently, Mrs. Woolsey didn't get the memo f from our, our discussions when we started the meeting tonight. Um, and she'll never get the memo, and that's okay. Uh, it's a great town. There uh, is not a problem with the budget committee. Um, I have a job. I listen to the uh, uh, SAU 90 director and uh, finance director at the budget committee. I thought it was a great presentation, and I came immediately over here. I spoke with you prior to the meeting, as I always do. You had no information requests. Uh, nobody on the board had any information requests. And there's a good reason, because there's no budget yet. Uh, some people like to meet, perhaps like Mrs. Woolsey, and argue and uh, sue people and complain and whine and uh, drive people off boards and fire chairmen. But that day's gone. There was an election, and uh, people aren't tolerating that anymore. And as the budget does come into play, we have Mr. Uh, Lapham that was in here tonight. He's looking forward to working together. Um, I am. But uh, we engage in professional communications in this town. We engage in good intentions. 
Uh, we treat each other with respect, except for Mrs. Woolsey and her cohorts. And uh, we don't uh, work for that gotcha moment on camera. We don't try and make people look bad. And it's just not that complicated. The budget process is not that complicated. Uh, what is complicated is being a fireman. What is complicated is being a police officer. What is complicated is what Chris Jacobs just talked to us about. What is complicated is running a family in this town, uh, making your household work. None of the stuff that Mrs. Wolsey talks about. We're all tired of her. There'll be an election in March. Uh, again, I will participate in the meetings and act as a conduit for any information that folks have. Last year, uh, the budget committee at the it's saying the 11th hour is very gratuitous, and they have this right, uh, slash $700,000 from the budget. Our representative last year, did you ever hear anything until the motion was made? Okay, so he sat through all those meetings, and they slashed $700,000. Uh, so you can sit in meetings all you want with last year's budget committee, but when they slash seven hundred grand, you don't even hear about it. Uh, I would call that a waste of time. I would call that a lack of respect. Uh, and there was no communication, and this is a municipal platform. I don't listen to what Mrs. Woolsey has to say. I don't listen to her and her cohorts' editorials, what they write in the paper. It's old news, it's bad news, and it's not good for this town. Uh, and I want to thank you for the couple of moments that uh, you did allow me to speak tonight. And uh, I thank my other two Board of Selectmen members. Thank you, sir. Um, I would just like, you know, like Mrs. Woolsey asked, did I watch the meeting? I watch every meeting that I can that has to do with Hampton. I particularly watch that meeting from beginning to the end. Uh, I somehow, uh, not that this has much to do with it, but when Bill Lally was the, um, um, the select representative, he didn't go to the meetings and um, there, was, there really wasn't any con very much controversy over that. I can't remember if someone did eventually start going um, but he just wouldn't go because uh, he was attacked personally uh, and by members of the board. And um, that was the... Uh, that was a comment by Mr. Silverton. Oh, I didn't want to say that, but... Well, oh, okay. nothing secret. Um, well, I will tell you that there's nothing secret with Mrs. Latimer and myself. I do her hair. I spent two hours talking to her. So yeah, I do talk to Mrs. Latimer. And I know exactly what's happening at the Budget Committee. She knows exactly how I feel about it. So I have no problem with Mrs. Latimer or with anybody on uh, the Budget Committee. We've done what we're supposed to do. We've This board has uh, set a... a uh, a course and we've tried to follow it and I have no problem with that or anybody at the Budget Committee. Um, I have people like Max calling up day and night about asking for comments uh, about what Mr. Zanoy says, whatever. Everybody's entitled to say what they want and um, I think that it's all going to work out just fine. Thank you. Motion to adjourn at uh, 2015, sir. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Good night. Good night. David, do you have any idea when Fred will be back?